Welcome back to Star Control Origins. So, I had quite a <laughs> number of episodes recorded, um, 12 to be accurate, and I haven't played the game for uh, nearly a week now, because I wanted to uh, be able to let you guys catch up on whatever I've been missing out on and stuff like that. Um, but I still have the notes from when I was playing last. Um, as you can see, I've done some exploring down here. I don't think that was in the last episode because I have a sheet of notes of systems that I have uh, visited and things that I've done between episodes. And I'll just start at the top there. In the system Seta Parvo B, um, I discovered that the MUK had lost a ship and they asked me to follow up on it. Uh, and I have found this ship on Sato Pavo B1. The crew, crew is gone um, and apparently the crew may have been eaten by the local creatures. And this gained me an item. Um, let's see. It seems to have disappeared here. I had it. I may have delivered it. It was called an ink blob. Uh, on Eta Parvo 8, I found another crashed UK ship uh, which held 3000 RU. On Gamma Parvo 1, I found a dead space fish, of all things. For some reason, that dead space fish was worth 4000 RU. On the Ross 154, I delivered a quest which was some pirates that had to be killed, and I got a reward of 6,000 RU for that. Then I visited Earth to uh, sell some minerals and stuff. As you may notice, I have a substantial amount of RU now. And I was told that UK diplomats have arrived, and uh, they had made inquiries about the fish. Of course. Not the dead fish that I found, but of course the fish on Earth. Also, Star Control wanted me to start colonizing other worlds, so we were told that we need to find hyperdrives. I already have the Taiwan Cuddle Drive, but for some reason I was told that I needed 100 francium, which I have, but I'm not sure that the Cuddle Drive is actually uh, acceptable for that quest at all. So, even if I have more than 100 francium, I don't get any option there. Um, they... Oh, well, yeah, I also installed um, the item, which is called... Let's see here. Where is it? There we are. Fleet Amplifier Mark Two. Fleet Weapon Amplifier Mark II. Uh, this makes uh, all of the ships in my fleet do 30% more damage, which I find pretty handy. Then I visited Russell Haig A. On the planet of Frasatir, I found a mercenary base where I can buy mercenary ships for 800 RUs apiece. On Russell Haig B, I found a syndicate trading post for ship outfitting and fuel. On Yota Moose 3, I found some sleeping robots in an abandoned mining camp, and uh, I salvaged some of them for 2000 RU. On Gamma Moose 4, I found the item, the ultimate widget, which I have no idea what it's for, but I assume that it is a quest that we will encounter at some point. On Zeta Moose 4A, I found a crashed scribe cruiser. The crew seemed to have been eaten by critters. However, the ship was in perfect shape and uh, is possible for me to actually put into the fleet. I don't think I've done that, but if I want it, it's waiting for me at a uh, space station. On Seta Moose 3, I found a Mailner trader who is uh, trading in fuel and stuff like that. And on Atomus 9, I found another robot outpost, which I salvaged for 3000 RU, and I also met a Menkmak who told us that the Menkmak homeworld is now in Beta Lynx. 
So that's what I did between episodes. Now there was a few comments that were made on my videos. Uh, I seem to have forgotten about an unidentified object when I visited Laland 211853A. So we will be going there. Um, in the same system I also may have missed to uh, check out a moon. It appears to be broken but it might not actually be. No, sorry, that was in Alpha Centauri. So there is a moon in Alpha Centauri and a moon in Laland 21 in 185, which I may have missed. Then there is a something that was guarded by drones, um, which I believe was in Sol system actually. Um, we will be going to these three systems first. And there was a very good question in regards to the hexagonal towers that we found on the planet Phantom's treasure in the system of Epsilon Fartum. Can these be shot at like the rocks on certain moons can? So those are things that we are going to uh, take a look at in this uh, episode, amongst other things. First of all, let's go back to Laland 21185 and check out the unidentified object and the moon that I seem to have missed. I like the uh, effect of all the comets and meteorites and things that are moving around in the background when they're traveling through hyperspace. Actually quite soothing to look at, even with a funky red color. Although, there's a question though. If this is two-dimensional, as we were told by someone, then why is the stars obviously three-dimensional in that view? That is something that we need to uh, philosophize. So philosophize, yes, something like that, about carefully. Okay, so we are going to Lalande 211853A first of all. I believe that would be this one. But first of all, the moon here should be in here. Let's go to 211852 first. I can see the moon, but I for some reason can't click it. Oh, it's in Poxa. So not 2A, but Poxa. Let's have a look at that. Not really much of interest here, sadly. Oh, but I clicked land anyways. Well, since I went down here, I can just as well get that technetium. And uh, <clears throat> show you all my brilliant driving skills as per usual. This planet is exceptionally bad though. Oh, there's a critter here. There we go, and off, off we go. Okay, so three. I think that planet was above the sun. Yes, right there. So three A would be the moon. Oh yeah, they have patched the game. There are various uh, tweaks and bug fixes. Uh, one of them is that some systems you visited should be greyed out, but I'm not sure if that's functional or not because I saw someone in the Steam forums commenting that they were curious about why it had been removed. And I think that uh, one of the devs at Stardock, it might actually be Brad Wardle himself, mentioned that they wanted to make that into an option uh, because of one or another reason. Also, the, as you can see in the top there, it's gone now. Uh, the guy tells us that the planet doesn't have much value if it isn't really worth visiting for the resources, which is uh, handy. Ah, yeah, there's the unidentified object, which is a uh, crashed spaceship. Let's grab that. I'm not sure how I missed that. I must have been in a hurry because it's quite big <laughs> on this small moon found a wrecked go. ship captain we'll see if we can get this thing flying again of course you can okay uh, now let's go over to alpha centauri 
Alpha Centauri A. And check out that uh, moon. That looks like it is a broken one. I'm not sure if it is a broken moon or not. It is. Uh, it was. This was something that happened quite a few episodes back. So. You see, the stars are three-dimensional, just like I said. And apparently, this thing is two-dimensional. would be 4, which is this planet, so it would be this one, Alpha Centauri A4b. It does indeed look broken, uh, but it might not actually be. Hmm. Well, that definitely looks broken to me. Yes, it's broken. Uh, could it have been this one down here? We'll just check out quickly. No, nope, I've been here. Okay, so it was actually broken. Uh, then there is the question about... I have no idea where Epsilon Fatum is. All the way up there. Well, I think it's close to one of those... Um... No, it's not. I don't think we're gonna go there. So what, if we find some of those hexagonal towers, then yes, but I'm not going through all of this just to check out whether those can be uh, shot at the moment. So instead we will go back to uh, Seoul. And we'll check out... Hold on. Elpis next to Artemis was mentioned. Do we have any moons in the solar system named Elpis and Artemis? Right, right, no, this... It's this. So... Yeah, let's go check that out. Not a big fan of drones, I must admit. There is an identif unidentified structure here, and there are other things down here of interest as well, like polonium. Right, wait, <clears throat> we need to go back to uh, Star Control and actually fit the, um, the firing device, because I removed that. Um, I don't remember exactly why, I think I removed it because I needed Toxic or Fire Protection? Welcome back, Captain. Thank you. Let's go to the shipyard and outfit. Yeah, I removed it because of the uh, the heat shields. So we need to change this with the lander cannon. Back, we can sell all the conventionals while we're here. There we go. Anything else, Captain? About what? Wait. Anything let's... else, Captain? Oh, I've got the hyperdrive. You do have a pretty interesting looking hyperdrive there, Captain. But it's currently installed on your ship. You're going to need that yourself, right? What we need from you is a spare hyperdrive in your inventory. If you don't want that one on your ship, you can try unequipping it at the shipyard. Just remember you'll have to replace it with something else. You're not much used to star control if you can't fly through hyperspace yourself. This is a good point. Uh, I believe that I've swapped out our hyperdrive with the enforcer drive that we got by the Drenkend. I have no idea. Yeah. 
so it makes flying through hyperspace quicker. That doesn't save us any fuel, but it does make it quicker. Um, I'm gonna hold on to that one for now. Um, let's fill up the fuel. That is a good idea. There we go. Um, Anything else, Captain? No, thank you. I'll get going. Good luck, Captain. We'll go back to uh, Elpis and uh, shoot down those little uh, drones. It's so strange to see Earth without the red shield around it. That is a reference to Star Control 2 for anyone who might not know. Okay, so here we are. I wonder what this thing down here is. I hope that isn't a drone that we're landing on top of. No, it isn't. Thank you. Good. Um, ah, good. It is drone stuff. Doesn't uh, handle much damage, which is always a good thing. Not a good shooter today either, it would seem. That one is a bit too close for my tastes. Good. There are three drones left. Two drones left. This. Captain, it's going to be too dangerous entering this place right. until all these drones are dead or asleep or... Well, they probably don't need sleep, do they? <clears throat> Just dead, then. Yes. Here we go. Let's gather up the uh, resources that are of interest, like the polonium over here. Probably pick up the rest as well. I don't know, I think we need the fluorine. We can definitely take this green stuff. Should be worth five apiece. Not that we need money at the moment, but you never know. Might be necessary in the future. Like so. And the final piece down here. There we go. Let's go check out this structure and see what it is. I wonder if it, this is some lexite thing. Captain, you're not going to believe it. Hmm. This looks like it's another lexite facility. This must be where they went after they left the moon. This is bigger and more well equipped than their lunar facility. There's equipment here that's clearly intended for constructing a starship, a big one. Oh, this is nuts. There's a star chart here, Captain. Looks like the W51 giant molecular cloud is highlighted. That's like 17,000 light years away. There's more. The radio antenna outside seems to be tracking W51 whenever it's above the horizon. Did the Lexites decipher something in the W51 radio source? Is that where they're going? Or going away from? <clears throat> no Lexites around to ask any questions. Looks like they left in a hurry. There are a lot of spare parts just left lying around. We should notify Earth about this. Wait, here's something. This is a ship. A small one. Clearly they didn't build the whole hangar for just this. An interceptor maybe, but it looks incomplete. If I'm reading these engine schematics right, it looks like its thrusters require neutronium to operate. I'm astounded we have that. <laughs> Let's plug it in now. It worked. The ship is powering up now, Captain. We'll escort it back to the fleet right away. Interesting. So apparently we have a Lexite ship in our fleet. That, that could be useful. I find it funny that he was surprised that it was a Lexite facility while I was not, though. Okay, let's go back to Earth and have a look at that Lexite thing. 
Uh, uh, first of all, let's check W51. Well, that seems to be outside of the... Uh... Yep, that seems to be outside of our uh, range, so it's still the Eta Ulvoran system. Which is of interest to us. Welcome back, Captain. Yeah, we've seen the recordings of your activities on the surface. So, we didn't tell you the whole story, Captain. Gee. In fact, nobody outside of Star Control's senior ranks knows what I'm about to tell you. Before the Lexites left, they contacted the leaders of every government in the world and delivered a threat. Not a threat from them, a threat from someone else. The Lexites had evidently deciphered a radio signal, the first solid evidence of alien life. Alien life that was killing each other. The Lexites wouldn't share the entire message with us, but they believed this signal posed an immense and immediate threat to life on Earth. So they ran. Star Control was founded one year later. You can now see why we're so concerned about alien radio signals. And now you've found evidence the Lexite's mysterious signal comes from the W51 radio source. The good news is that's 17,000 light years away. The bad news is it still caused the Lexites to run away, like immediately. There aren't many other clues to go on though, so for now, your orders remain the same. Find out more information about the Lexites and the galaxy around us. As if the scribe isn't an imminent threat enough, we're going to worry about something f that far away. Good luck, Captain. Right. Um, we had the home system of the Menkmak, which I believe was let's just check in the objectives much easier than my notes um uh, Mac home world oh it doesn't say so beta Linux that is what my notes say where is beta Linux there we go let's head over there probably gonna have to fight a few Mac on the way though and yes I know I forgot to check out the oh driving straight through the sun well now that that's impressive heat shielding. Uh, I forgot to check out the Lexite ship, also the Scribe vessel, but yeah, we'll do that next time. Or whenever I remember. <clears throat> so I'm curious. If I remove... Doesn't really look different to me, so I'll just continue to mark them. And for anyone who's wondering, uh, white means that we're done with it. Yellow means that there are still resources there. Uh, the uh, cyan blue ones mean that there are a homeworld or a trading outpost or something there. And the um, Purple or dark blue ones means that there's a colonizable planet there. Red ones are related to quests. And purple ones are trading stations. Which I'm not sure why I've done, because this one should actually be that color. Oh, it was because of the creatures. Yeah, you can trade creatures up there. Heading into the Mankmak territory now, so they don't seem particularly friendly to us. Here's to hope that maybe we can get an ear from them though. Plenty of them around, that's for sure. That thing 
Went in there, okay, good. Here we are. So how many ships are on their way to kill us right off the bat? Interesting, they don't seem to care about me. No. Mm. Hey, it's that ugly spaceship we've heard so much about. We'll just be going now. Right, uh, about that. Yes. Technically, we're card carrying members of the Scribe Empire. Even if they won't trust us with the actual cards. Mm -hmm. And there's an unknown alien, we're required to annihilate you. So eat it, punks. Okay. It's a freighter. That certainly did a lot of damage. Two thousand. Oh, wow. New, 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 whatever, Menkmak. Right. Is that a scribe ship? It looks like a scribe ship. No, it isn't. Okay, here we go. Hello. Hey, it's those aliens who tied a Taiwan hyperdrive to their garbage ship. Where'd they Mank Mank? Look at you! Hello, Mank Mank. We come in peace. And we receive you in something that's probably pretty close to that. Anyways, make yourselves at home. Lower your shields, unlock your doors, all that. Mm hmm And sorry about the mess. We just moved in to new, new, new whatever Mink Mac. That's why it's still uh, kind of a dump. It's got nothing on old Mink Mac. What happened to old Mink Mac? It uh, got destroyed. It's this uh, whole big thing. And we don't mean big thing as in it's a touchy subject that we don't want to talk about. Uh -huh. We mean it's literally a big thing. Uh -huh. Old Mankmak was destroyed by a massive moon-sized space monster. Uh -huh. How did that happen? It's this whole big thing. Yes. And now it's something we don't want to talk about. Uh -huh. Come on. Sure, let's go over our story of unending pain. That sounds like a fun conversation. Old Mankmak. And every homeworld we've settled on since has been devoured by a massive space beast called the Ancient One. Mm -hmm. Technically, he only devours the atmosphere. But technically, we need that to breathe. Yes. Which is why we have to move our entire homeworld every so often. Sounds inconvenient. How do you move your entire homeworld? You live out of suitcases a lot. <laughs> Why does he do it? He doesn't talk or have a big speech bubble above his head, so it's <laughs> a little hard to pin down his motivations. He just shows up and starts wrecking everyone's day. <laughs> but enough about the endless cavalcade of misery and torment which fill our days. What brings you to new, 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 whatever Minkmak, ugly aliens? <sighs> We're here seeking allies and assistance. Well, you're not a member of the Scribe Empire, which means you must be looking for allies and assistance to fight the Scribe. <laughs> Good luck with that. Can we have your stuff when you die, space idiots? We're not fighting the Scribe. We like being unexploded, thanks. Uh. But until you guys kill yourselves, you're welcome to come hang out whenever you want. Oh, and let us know if you want to buy anything. We've uh -huh. got suspiciously great deals on lots of incredible things. Could you also ask your ships to stop attacking us? Oh, uh, that. Yeah, technically we're supposed to annihilate you because of, you know, the rules. Mm-hmm. But you seem cool. 
We'll talk to the fleet and let them know to hold off on following the rules around you. Why, thank you. What's up with that ear taped to the side of your head? Oh, that thing? It stops the Drenkin from killing us. Yes. The Drenkin have used their tiny sputtering brains to deduce that the universe should only have three eared beings in it. So now they attack any species with more or less than three ears. We've noticed. As a two eared species, this left us with one obvious choice taping fake ears to our head. Yeah. Okay, there were probably other choices. <laughs> uh, this was just easiest. Mm -hmm. You can talk to the Drenkin if you want to know more. Just be careful. Conversations with them can be pretty painful. Thousands of years ago, the scribe found the dumbest Drenkin they could, hit him on the head with a shovel, then took his DNA. Then they hit that DNA with a shovel. A few iterations of cloning and shovels later, <laughs> We ended up with the modern Drenkin. The only thing they know is to obey the scribe. They're also all a little afraid of shovels. Mm -hmm. I like this guy. What was that about buying things? In our dealings with other aliens, we often acquire, through totally legitimate and morally untroubling means, mm -hmm. interesting bits of technology. Mm -hmm. We would like to sell you these bits of technology. You can take them to your garbage ship, just like you did with that alien hyperdrive. So, you interested? We're not not interested if you catch our meaning. <laughs> so at the moment, we have the following items available for purchase. A hyperdrive that belonged to an alien who definitely wanted to give it up. Mm -hmm. A Mank Mac Negotiator class vessel. Useful for ruining various people's days. An enhanced collector for improving the grabbing range of your various terrestrial based resource grabbers. Any of that interest you? Yes. 30,000? Whoa. Well, sure. Let's have the hyperdrive. Ah, an excellent choice. Yes. Is there anything else? Possibly stolen hyperdrive. <laughs> Nothing hey, for now, thanks. Lost. Um, can we buy some supplies? Let's check out that hyperdrive. Fifty! Wow! All of its serial numbers have been filed off. Well, we'll take that. Um, you guys sell anything? Oh, stock conventionals. Just fuel. I can leave it there. There is the leg. Oh. It's not really that good considering. Oh, it does have a very high recharge, but it's very few crew. Nice acceleration. I wish this thing told us what kind of weapon this thing had. Like, could I click something or see it? But I guess I'll just have to try it in the. Um, uh, one-on-one -on -one kind of uh, the fighting game or try it live either works for me okay so that was that and with that done i actually think this is a good place to end the episode so uh, thank you all very much for joining me and see you all next time